so yeah, so what's my thoughts on, on rent to rent as a strategy? Well, this is a challenging one and I'm just going to say it as it is. I'm not a fan for a couple of particular reasons. And I really want you to watch this video because 99% of those who are doing rent to rent are doing them incorrectly and they're going to leave themselves open up for major backlash. And in my opinion, if they've not structured their rent to rent business in the right manner, they could potentially be taking themselves out of the game and potentially open themselves up to being fined heavily and more importantly, giving the wrong advice to those people who you're doing a rent to rent contract with. So let's just identify what a rent to rent is in the first basis for those who are not sure or maybe heard this buzzword because it's doing the rounds at the moment. Lots of people are asking questions. I'm getting this quite often as Paul, what do I think about a rent to rent strategy? You know, how do I build a rent to rent business? And um, you know, all this kind of stuff around it. Now, can it make you good cash flow? Yes, however, you've got to question is that are you doing it the correct way? And I'm going to discuss how you should do it the correct way. The biggest challenge is that let's say you have a landlord or a property owner. Let's say you've got a property owner. They have a property and maybe they're trying to rent the property out and they're getting no joy or they don't want to be a landlord and they like the appeal of someone who's going to come in and take over their property and effectively give that landlord, give that property owner a fixed monthly rent so they don't need to worry about anything else. They don't need to worry about management fees. They don't need to worry about, which often happens, repairs. They don't have to worry about maintenance. They don't have to worry about tenants, nothing. They just get a fixed amount, which is normally a lot lower than it would be for a single let but the appeal to the homeowner or landlord is that they don't need to worry about all these fees and so forth. And the person who's taken on that property will then go and do a sublet. So they'll effectively then go and put that property on the market and maybe do um, a HMO, household multiple occupation, which they're then renting out each room individually, which then maximizes the rent. Now the challenge around that is, is that you need to get a HMO license and if you're not in an area where you require a license, then I would tread very carefully because you want to be assured that if you are going to be the HMO operator, the person who's doing the final let to the end clients who are going to be renting room for room, you need to make sure that, that they've got all of this in place. And bear in mind that the license will be done in the homeowner's name. And most of these people are not doing that. So that there is a concern. What others are doing is they're taking the same strategy but not doing a HMO stroke multi-let process. What they're doing is they're doing a short-term holiday let, like a serviced accommodation model, which a lot of people have heard of, like Airbnb or Booking.com, where they're renting out the house you know, for a short term, maybe it's a weekend or one week or two weeks or whatever it may be. And that's fine because you can maximize the income there, which is a lot more than it would be for a single let. So the person who's doing the rent-to-rent -rent contract what they're tending to do is they're giving a fixed mortgage or a fixed um, rent to the homeowner. So let's say it's £500 and they're able to go out and do, um, you know, rent each of the rooms out individually or do a service accommodation model, which is a short term lets, and they might be able to go and make a thousand or £1,500. So they're making significantly more by managing that whole process. But here's the flaw, here's the problem. Whoever the homeowner is must get the consent to let from the current lender. The consent to let. Now, nine out of 10 times, the homeowner will get consent to let. They'll get the consent to let. And why will they get that? Because they can prove to their current lender that they have moved out of that home and they're moved elsewhere and they've not been able to sell the property, whatever reason. And that's their conversation with the lender to get the consent to let. And nine out of 10 times, they will get that. But the lender, no traditional high street lender, in fact, very little lenders at all will give the consent, will grant the consent to do a sublet. And that's what it is. 
because you're effectively letting that property to a management agent, an individual is going to do the rent to rent, and then they're going to go and sublet that on a short term basis or to multiple people who are going to rent out a room by room basis. And this is the problem. If, for example, you get the wrong tenants in there because you never got the HMO license, or you do go for a HMO license and they do their, their, the council do their searches and, and, and find out that, wait a wee minute, there's a management company in here. Uh, does the current lender on that property, do they have the consent for subletting? That's red flags. If you're going to do a service accommodation model and you have, um, you know, you know, a, a, a someone who comes and rents for that weekend and they throw a party, for example, and you've got the local residents that complain to the local housing authority and the council start doing a little bit of research and looking into you as a management agency and find out the lender that's involved there and then they make their inquiries and this is happening, this is happening all over. This is becoming more common. They then find out that, wait a wee minute, we have just spoken to the lender we, we don't like the fact that this is short-term lets and the, the neighbours are complaining because there's been bad tenants and there's a high turnover of people coming in and so forth. And this is why even service accommodation is getting a lot of bad rap and why a lot of you know cities and countries are banning short-term lets in certain locations. You know, And this is because that there's certain tenants that come in, they create a lot of havoc and noise and it's, it's upsetting the residents and all it takes them is to do a little bit of further checks and then they then contact your current lender, the landlord or the homeowner's lender and they realise that they did not get the consent to sublet. 99% of the people who are doing rent to rent contracts are not getting the consent to sublet and no lender will give that, no lender will grant that. So 99% of people who are doing this, they're literally going on the basis of hoping and this is building their business on the sand. There's no foundations to this. They're hoping that they'll never get found out. They'll never get caught. They're going on the basis, no, um, I'll be the, the, you know, I won't be the ones that get caught. We, 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 you know, you don't know this. That's too high of a risk. Now, I have a little running joke in the office with my, 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 my staff, my employees, everybody I work with, my business partners, even my clients. I have a running joke, and that running joke is, is that I act as if I'm going to be the next Prime Minister of the UK. And <laughs> not that I wish that upon anyone because it's a job in half in itself, but the reason I say that is because if you're going to run for Prime Minister of the UK, they're going to look into every single thing about you and your company, how you operate, how you do things. You'll be under a fine scrutiny with a magnifying glass to make sure that you are squeaky clean in all areas. And if I happen to be running a business, that has little things which I'm not disclosing, or I'm not getting the consent to let, as an example, to sublet, and I'm not doing the right things in the right manner, that's going to then bite me in the freaking ass, and it's going to cause me significant problems going forward. Now, even if you're not going to go and run for Prime Minister, do you want to have a business that could come crashing down on you? Now, let's talk about the 1% the that are doing it right. The 1% that are doing it right, what they are doing effectively is they're making sure they can get a commercial lending on the property. Or, and then that, that means you're having to go and buy the property effectively, or you're going to have to convince the homeowner to change their mortgage lender to a commercial lender. Or they're doing it on homeowners who do not have a mortgage because there's no lender to report to and adhere to. There's also a way you can do it, where you can do it on a delayed completion basis. However, there's still a lender that you need to adhere to, and it just becomes too big of a risk, in my opinion, and it's just not a risk worth even entertaining. There's other strategies that you can do, and I recommend that you do do, that can make you short-term strong cash flow, and also can give you that long-term wealth to build up. Now, just to get back to rent to rent as a strategy and what everyone thinks of, of an appeal, the, the appeal of that is is that you don't own the property, you're you're taking some other property, you're going to manage it on their behalf, you're going to make money and all that kind of stuff as well. The appeal to that is is that you're doing all the fucking work. When in actual fact, you've got to take that property, 
you don't want to do all the management yourself. You don't want to be trying to find all the tenants. You don't want to be looking after, making sure that you're getting the right tenants in the weekend, doing all the qualification process, you know, or arranging for the cleaners to come in and clean the property out, arranging all the bookings and stuff. You don't want to be doing all of that because that takes your time away from actually going out there and doing what, what you're supposed to do to make money in this property game. And that is the appeal to rent to rent, but when you start to look at it, it's not got that appeal with the amount of time and effort you need to put into it. So all I'm encouraging you just now is do your homework, make sure you really do your due diligence here because you're opening yourself up to build a business on the sand with no foundations at all that can come down crashing in a very short period of time. And I don't think that's worth the time and effort for the what if in the short term appeal of making quick money. There's much better strategies to be focused on and making strong income in this property business. Hey, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Make sure you're watching the stuff that I'm putting out because I talk about a lot of these strategies. Strategies that will give you sound business principles to build wealth short term and long term in this property business. So again, hope you enjoyed this video. Post below, love to hear your comments and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye for now. <laughs>